No one can explain it better than Almond, and Almond is an architect. You see, Almond graduated, well, not quite. You see, Mother Nature agreed to Almond's terms, cause nature. You will most likely have to make a lot of adjustments. Owning gerbils is a personal experience. Uh, whether you have a pair or a trio, they are always teaching you, especially not just because uh, they're not so common, but many things that I used were things of my Syrian hamster. And so I had to give them and try out new water dishes, for example, because one of the gerbils is breaking their neck trying to get it. It's honestly very specific to the gerbils you have, but some of the things they taught me was that I should never <laughs> hang any of their hides or toys to the directly to their lid because they're just going to take it out and they're going to try to even bite and chew the lid so they definitely taught me how uh, motivated they are to do those kinds of things if they find something and have an idea formed into their head it's going to stay there as long as you in the beginning realize that you're gonna have to make a lot of changes it will be helpful to know some life hacks to save you some of the a hassle that I had to go through. Many uh, conversations in many of my videos on whether you need a divider or cage topper because with gerbils you really do need to. Uh, you should be set but avoid not thinking about those things because it will uh, cost you and the gerbils. <laughs> Another thing you want to avoid, any thin plastic. Even this video that I'm showing you, the plastic does not look that thin whatsoever and they were still able to chew it so I had to remove it. You have to be very, very careful about having plastic in their enclosure if it's something that they are capable of chewing with their strong teeth and they're stronger than you think, uh, they will they will chew it because they want to make a burrow out of everything. No, I'm pretty sure she's talking about us. Who else would she be talking about? She's looking at us with a camera. You all have seen firsthand how much my <laughs> enclosure has changed throughout pretty much all of my videos. Uh, to hang the coconut that I added that I worked so hard on, it was... I made the coconut. I have a chain. We've gone from cardboard dividers to coroplast wrapped in um, solid terracotta clay so they couldn't chew it. When I first got lemon, beanie, and almond, I noticed that the 11 inch wheel that I used from KT. I don't think you're doing it right. I'm pretty sure I'm doing it right. There's only one way to run and I'm doing it. It was too slidey of a material, so we went to a 6.5-inch uh, wheel, which is supposed to be uh, a good size for male gerbils. <laughs> they are even uh, capable of doing it together. However, we found out that they are female, so we've gone to the final 9.5-inch uh, wheel. Avoid getting a wheel that they might not be able to run with. When it comes to smaller pets or small rodents, a lot of people think that it gets harder to tame or bond with them. Setting aside the fact that gerbils are not so common in the hobby compared to hamsters, just by observing the behavior of dwarf hamsters, it's often associated with how gerbils may act as well. And while their behavioral differences couldn't be more straightforward, a lot of people can make the assumption that because they are both tiny and skittish and very active, they behave the same and it's something super difficult to comprehend uh, creating a bond. It's so important to not give up hope because it couldn't be farther from the truth. They actually have shown me and as a previous owner of a wonderful Syrian hamster, uh, early in my channel I made videos about Simba, but even with the 
tolerance that Syrian hamsters have, you can become a place of safety or even like part of their clan to them to the point where they just abandon their normal instincts and realize that you, this big giant to them, uh, is something that they can also have a bond with, even if it's different than their socializing with gerbils. It honestly makes me quite sad to think that so many people give up or decide that gerbils are not for them uh, solely due to the fact that they kind of aren't easy to hold or there needs to be a lot of patience and some gerbils like almond just won't as you can see stop fearing you but they still can know that they're safe almond is very grateful <laughs> and she's always there in the morning they know and they're always looking for me they sleep out in the open they know they're protected it's just something that I wish more people could uh, get past and in this scene, this is actually Almond and it was like the biggest moment, the grandest moment, one of the uh, uh, in my life because the trust here is just insane. Now when it comes to their bedding, you do not want to get attached to the layout the way you have designed it, the way that you enjoy looking at it aesthetically because there is an architect in every gerbil clan, even if you only have two. <laughs> I actually have a video on the behaviors of gerbils that I'll link in the right hand corner so you can see. No one could explain it better than Almond, and Almond is an architect. You see, Almond graduated, well, not quite. You see, Mother Nature agreed to Almond's terms because nature. I see all of the time people treat animals that are not dogs or cats so differently. They don't uh, try to socialize with them in the same way. And while gerbils aren't <laughs> as uh, intellectual as dogs and cats, they are able to socialize with you by the way you speak, the tone you use, uh, what to expect with the tones that you're using, uh, be in the room with them because they feel safe even sleeping out in the open if they're comfortable with you and your environment. Thinking on whether you should get a gerbil or not, that is probably the one thing that people miss when they're trying to decide. You really want to be there for them and especially during the day. In my last video where I talked about what rabbits taught me and basically the whole socializing as well, I noticed that when I'm asking the rabbits if they want salads, the gerbils also know that they're going to expect that and I often see them waiting in their salad bowl so it's actually a really important thing that people miss. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm confusing Almond. But she's doing a good job. Amazing. Good job. <laughs> good job. Plus, you get to witness all of their cute behaviors in broad daylight. And lastly, you want to have a complete regimen of their food. Now a gerbil's diet is very different from a hamster and so super rare to find any food mix that is good for them. Uh, even with hamsters you kind of have to mix two different uh, brands of food together to get the right amount of protein but gerbils need a smaller amount of protein so you can't exactly do the same. Uh, and have all the benefits of both food mixes. There are only a handful of good brands. However, I've made multiple videos on a food mix that you can make yourself. And I've also included the guaranteed analysis of what you would need for gerbils that are still young and weaning, as well as just being adults, and then the percentages that they need when they are elderly. 
and you can find all of those videos in my gerbil care playlist i highly recommend checking out all of them and always use multiple sources when you're trying to make a decision on any animal and especially when it comes to their diet so i've also provided sources and some brands that we know of that are healthy but that's all for today let me know what you would recommend avoiding and i'll see you in the next video Thank you.